Hey everyone. So it's a little loud. I'm by the water, but it's so nice. I'm really comfortable and I'm not gonna move. So I'll just talk a little closer to the video so that you can definitely hear my voice. And um, I'm just inspired to make this video today because I'm seeing this week as really potent. Just, it's a high energy week. And you know, yesterday I was, uh, I'm working on my van, my van home, mobile home. And it, it, this whole process for me of building my home is like, it, it's entering into a completely new experience. Everything that I do here is completely new for me. So whenever I begin a new phase of the project, I check in with my emotional body, eventually. And it'll tell me what's going on. I may not know what to do, but there's information there. So I, I might feel something and that might lead me down a path of doing a little more research or asking for help or cleaning up first, taking my time. And, and I find if I navigate the inner world, the flow of my project and the synchronicities and the people that come and go and the support that comes into my life is so resonant and relevant, it's as if life was intelligent and is aware of what's happening on the inside and meets me there. And it is. So yesterday I'm working on my van, putting up wool. Actually, I put up the wool. And there are all these issues, like the wool insulation, it's sagging and I wanted to go to the next part. I want to get the, the paneling up so I have a wall. And I was literally, I mean, I bought, I bought paneling kind of on a whim and I just wanted to get it done. And I had all these thoughts in my mind, and this is key, why I needed to get it done. I'm using someone's garage, they're coming back soon, da 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 da. So a lot of stuff created rushing. And all of my tools are scattered all over the place, my floor is a mess, I can't find my bits. Something in me told me to stop. Thank God I did. And just to check in. So sometimes when I can't hear the inner guidance very clearly, I turn to the I Ching. The I Ching is a very Aquarian science. The I Ching is basically the higher mind. And it reflects the objective reality of the cosmos right now. And it's not speaking to our linear, subjective, very, very personalized ideas or conceptions of reality. It's speaking to reality through a bunch of symbols and archetypes and Chinese cultural mythology. And one of my inner guides once told me the I Ching, I was told two things. The I Ching reflects you back to you and it's a lot wiser than you. And I like both of that, both. It's reflecting you back to you and it's wiser than you. And I, I speak about the I Ching now and I'm telling you this story as a prelude to the transits that I'm about to speak about. So I do the I Ching and I get hexagram 50, line four. Uh, hexagram 50 is the cauldron in the King Wen version. And that's symbolic of a process of transformation. Something is stewing, something an alchemical process is coming together. That's my van, like my van is the cauldron. And line four is the, 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 the vessel is spoiled. Basically, it's like you're getting involved in something and you don't know what you're doing and you're gonna mess it up. So I took that as a really great invitation to stop and slow down and reassess. And I looked around and I realized, okay, my van's a mess. Mentally, I'm in a state of rushed. It's like I'm vibrating a belief, a reality in that moment that there's limited time, I gotta take care of things now. And in this moment of humility, of just kind of coming face to face with my actual reality, I realize something that I seem to realize over and over and over and over again, which is right now, just right now, where am I right now? What's happening right now? and to take responsibility to fully be honest with myself about what's now. So in being honest with myself, I acknowledge my state of mind and I acknowledge the state of my environment, which is always going to reflect the state of my mind, of course. And that got me thinking about the transits. <laughs> so 
you know, this, this week we're actually approaching the, the first real big eclipse of the season. There was a small one um, during the last, last cycle. And now this is going to be a lunar eclipse um, happening on a full moon. Then after that we'll have a solar eclipse, which will also be a pretty tight, strong one. And just before this next lunar eclipse, Mercury goes retrograde. <laughs> And then Mercury will be on the second eclipse, the one that comes after that. And this eclipse is happening right on Mars. This Mars that's been going retrograde in Aquarius. In fact, this eclipse is the, almost to a day, the midpoint of this entire Mars retrograde cycle. So this eclipse is actually a very significant nodal point in the larger transformative hubla of this summer. It, it's, it's a great time right now to check ourselves, see how we're doing. So as per anything Mars, there's almost this strong tendency for an unchecked orientation towards go, 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 do, do, do. It's a sense of immediacy. And Mars and Aquarius on the south node with this eclipse right now is purging the energies of anxiety and fear. Experiencing and feeling anxiety and fear is not necessarily an indication that that which we're afraid of or anxious about is real. In fact, relative to Aquarius, most of the stressful emotions that manifest within us are just vibrations and traumatic energies that reflect unresolved traumas in the past, not actually reflecting a real reality of dread that's manifesting now in this moment. So the limited, and I spoke about this in my last video, but the limited subjective mind just can't understand that. There's no, there's no way to understand that. And in that moment for me, when I'm in my van working on it and I'm just like in this go mode, the only thing I can understand and like really wrap my head around is what I think, <laughs> my conscious story of that moment. So it's always this case and this is strong right now, wherever we feel an impulse to just be in a reactive state, to not go there can feel like we're losing Mars. It can feel like we're not gonna make it. And yet we create space for this much grander reality. And this is the reality of synchronicity and resonance. I just keep on finding every step along my own build journey, the angels show up. I'm on the roof of my van, and I'm just tightening bolts, feeling the energy of what's next. And this man walks up to my van, and long story short, he says, I would love to help you. I have a saw, a whole shop, and an electric saw, and I can help you make cuts if you need to make cuts. And, you know, this beautiful elderly man, and he's just kind of been there for me. I'm finding, and this is something that I recognize for all of us, our suffering specific to these archetypes, specific to the Aquarian and then the Uranus and Taurus energy, resources, community. Our suffering here is not because there's a lack of what we need. This is a very bold statement. It's because we're projecting this idea of how we're gonna get what we need, how we're gonna do it, how we're gonna make it. But if we allow it, if we give our attention to the beautiful, really infinitely rich inner world, even if we feel so lost, even if we feel like we're just like out of it, to choose anyway, and if we feel like we're so far from the path, like we're just not making it, those are the moments, in fact, where the greatest growth becomes possible. Specifically those moments, right? It's, it's when we feel the greatest temptation to just go into unconscious mode and we feel Aquarius, the, the energy of dissociation could be strong right now. It's kind of going with the flow of things and kind of just stressing out and forcing and it's, it's, it's almost just like this machine orientation to living where there's like no more juice, no more life, no more excitement, no more interest. You know, relationship can become kind of monotonous. And one of the issues with Aquarius, especially with Uranus and Taurus is objectification. It's like the body just becomes a thing to deal with. 
Like, there's no pleasure. There's no real joy in it. It might be just a very like extreme sensual experience, but nothing sustainable, nothing really vibrant, nothing that brings real life. So it's always in these moments, let me tilt this camera a little bit. Yeah, it's better. It's always in these moments that we have a really great opportunity to bring our attention to seemingly the opposite of where we're instinctively drawn to be. And that's to be chill, to relax, to be Aquarius, to play it cool, to just chill out, right? Listen to some music. <laughs> the statement that we make by choosing contentment and examining the archetype of arrival. Examining and reflecting on what does arrival, landing, belonging mean? Aquarius is belonging. Aquarius is the larger ecosystem of the universe. Right? So in this one big community, everything and everyone belongs because it is. Here it is. And that concept is a very radical and intimate notion if we apply it to ourselves and to everything that arises every moment. This belongs. This too. Everything in our intentions, what we're trying to do. And so there's this beautiful symbiotic quality to life. As we bring attention to the inner members of our community, the ones that we might be ignoring or dissociating from or not interested in, Right? The one that wants to just rush. Um, you know, we, we bring attention to those members of the community and we say, okay, here's a good member. The one that's really uncomfortable with what you're doing. <laughs> it's like the, the, the one that's kind of screaming in the back of your head, I don't like this. I don't really like what you're doing here. This is not really what I want to do. And then you're like, well, sorry, you gotta come along. Like all these different components of our psyche are just forced to come along with us. Whether we're being kind, polite, nourishing, nurturing, gentle, playful, it doesn't really matter. All of us has to come with whatever we're choosing to focus on. And the Aquarian teaching is the entire universe exists within us. All the characters of the cosmos are within each of us. And so, it's a very direct experience. Those outer characters can show up as we meet them. When we meet that voice that says, I kind of want you to slow down and just like take some space and see it more clearly, you're kind of rushing. When we give more space to that and we say, okay, that's cool, yeah. I'm just gonna relax a little bit and come back to my joy. We are able to then manifest pretty much immediately the outer characters that will really meet those needs that we're otherwise ignoring. So, I mean, just to share my own journey with this is, I stopped, I realized I don't know what I'm doing. I can use some help. So I posted on a couple of Facebook groups uh, on my wall and then also this van building group on Facebook. What I'm doing, and I posted a picture of what I'm doing and I got the most amazing feedback. And then like someone saying, yeah, I'm gonna be where you are right now and I can meet you. and. Then this other elderly man, the one that met me when I was on my roof, um, showed up and he's like, hey, how you doing? Do you need any more help? It's this beautiful experience of inner and outer as one. You know, I'm finding on my own journey that awakening has nothing inherently to do with not having negative feelings, not having stress, not having, you know, difficulties with my life. It's my relationship to it. It's saying there's space inside for all of it, but it's the moment that we start to alienate some members of the party in favor of other members of the party. Then we have people sitting in the corner of the room feeling hurt, and that isn't wholeness, right? I like a party where everyone feels invited. Everyone's like, yeah, this is like the best party. I'm so happy to be here with all of you. So one thing that I think is really meaningful to do and helpful to do during this time, and this is, you know, Uranus and Taurus, is sing, sing. 
Uranus Aquarius is higher mind. It's it's a greater potential of evolution. It's basically what happens naturally in this human experience when we're operating more from a freed up place and not bound so much in the linear, stressful, effortful thinking that we tend to tend to dominate our consciousness. We find that life is much more about rhythm, harmony, song, right? We can experience the subtleties of that much more. And we can come together and share that in just more beautiful ways to feel how the entire outer community harmoniously fits together in the most unique and perfect way just for you. It's so true. Just for you, just exactly as you need it, we all come together for one another perfectly the way we need it. So I'm going to sing a song and uh, hopefully my head is blocking the sun. Yeah, shoot, it's good enough. This is an old song and it actually just popped in my head today and I think it's, it's really appropriate. Patience and compassion I sing. In patience and compassion I sing. I, 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 I hold back from speaking when my mind isn't clear. And I abstain from acting when my heart is in fear. I, I, in patience and compassion, I sing. In patience and compassion, I sing. If I don't know where I'm going, I remember that I'm here. The winds of grace are blowing this awakening so dear. I, 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 I. In patience and compassion I sing. In patience and compassion I sing. So well, one more note on the astrology. Again, this eclipse is happening on Mars, on the south though. So it's a very cleansing, purging time. Don't take the trauma as indicative of an issue. Take it as indicative of exactly where you get to return to a different state of consciousness, different orientation. Mercury going retrograde now, and then pretty much towards the latter two thirds of the retrograde, it'll be on that next eclipse. It's in Leo. So it's rethinking our creative projects. As we liberate our minds and aren't bound by the stress and the trauma, it creates so much space for this Leo. That's what the, the, during these eclipses, Leo is what's emerging. Creativity, joy, fun, all of that. Leo is our, our most individualized, personally relevant creative contribution to life, to the present moment. And when we're in the Leo world, we're excited, we're engaged, we're alive, we're giving all of ourselves. So may this week and then like the greater extension of this next month <laughs> during these eclipses and this whole retrograde time period be easy, interesting, joyful, really interesting it's aquarius is interesting <sighs> 
All right, much love to you all.